All right, man. So what's up, everybody? Uh, y'all know how I like to do. It's an old, you can leave your, uh, I was about to say, just, you know, you good. Um, I'm glad you got a straw. So, you know, Kim got that loud ass cup. <laughs> she gonna Hard hear to see it right on cue. <laughs> she gonna, uh, petty, 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 petty. Let me see if I can find her something. How am I petty, though? You already know how you petty. You know why you petty? I'm not, though. That's petty? You know why it's petty. No, it's not. I wanna know. Uh, you gotta come back for a whole nother session to get that kind of juice. That's an off air conversation. We try to keep this one all professional and no cussing and things of that nature. So, what's up? What's up? What's up, everybody, man? Welcome back to another What You Mean podcast for an Industry Monday. I am your boy, your host, LaChestin, and you're rocking with. <laughs> I'm your host, Co host, Kim. Hey, y'all. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so today, man, we have a phenomenal black woman we in the do. building here sure today do. to uh, tell you a little bit about herself, what she does, what she contributes. And uh, of course, y'all know we're going to turn the mic over to her so she can introduce herself. Hey, yes, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. What's hey, good? girl. <laughs> well, thank y'all for having me. Um, <laughs> well, my name is Lavinia. Holiday. I don't gave my whole government name. That's okay. That's cool. Jeez. But some of y'all may know me as V Monet Holiday. Yeah. V Monet. V Monet. You see, I just rolls off your tongue. Yeah, that's how I'm kind of sexy. I ain't even going to lie. Yeah. V Monet. Let me get my Bravo. What's it called? <laughs> Bravo, right? So I get my voice right so it sounds good. Yeah, no. so V Monet Holiday <laughs> um, on social media. And I'm the founder of Pose Bazaar Foundation. That's a nonprofit here in Birmingham where we specialize in the creative arts. So, uh, for fashion, art, music, and education for the youth in underprivileged and underserved areas. Um, so throughout the year, what we have is different events to raise money for scholarships and grants in support of other nonprofits um, outside of our area in, uh, in places where we can't reach. So we're basically helping them further along their missions as well. Gotcha. So, yeah. So you, do you know um, Devin Franklin? Oh, not Devin Franklin. What's Devin last name? Uh, Devin Frazier. Do you know her by chance? Mm, unless I see her face, most um, likely. Have you ever heard of an organization called I See Me Inc.? No. Okay. But I do know Devin Franklin, so um, shout out to him and making good. Um. <coughs> <laughs> we have another petty person in the building. <laughs> She's Sorry. officially I'm checking in. <laughs> I'm though. glad y'all yeah. sitting on that Ooh. side. I'm glad y'all on that side of the table. You're not going to come for my girl. You but nah, man. Anyway. Honestly, like, uh, with what you just told me, like, your mission and your vision is for your foundation. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not highlighting anybody else on this platform that we're sharing with you today. It's just when we think about, you know, the culture, when we think about networking, rubbing shoulders inside of the Pick Visual Studios, like, everybody that come in here, we don't want you to leave and not leave with something that you didn't have. Uh, that, that we want you to leave with something that you yeah. can have before you walk before you walk away. So in cahoots with what you're talking about, you know what I'm saying. What Devin does is she started a, a, a foundation called I See Me Inc. Mm -hmm. And basically what it does is it caters to basically the literacy of Black people. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. their their bottom line is stopping the pipeline to prisons mm -hmm. because you know the majority of people in prison like have like a fourth fifth grade reading level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So she encourages the youth and kids to read books where they see themselves. Yeah. So the only books they push out are authors that you're going to see a black little girl in a book or a black little kid in a book or a black dad or black mom. So as far as the arts go and things that you're doing, like I definitely think that y'all will probably make a dynamic duo in whatever y'all decided to do. So I just wanted to make mention based on what you just shared with me that your right. foundation is doing. No, understood. I would love to meet her. Um, so, so what what kind of <laughs> what kind of um and and I'm and, and I had to kind of butt myself out sometime mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because I go in interview mode because I just be wanting to know and I I'm I'm learning each one of our podcasts is gonna get better we're gonna be better and I had to like slow down a little bit and be like mm -hmm. hey Kim you got some so you know um, <laughs> he be on the go I just yeah yes, girl. yeah mm -hmm. for real <laughs> like I did once I start going I'll be going because I be wanting to know. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, are there any recent events that you can tell us about that you've had or 
any recent things that's going on that's directly benefiting what you're trying to do in terms of your foundation? Well, back in, it, we started in 2017, okay. um, but we wasn't a nonprofit, we was a for-profit. And we did like a, a test run okay. um, at the BJCC with Don Rashard, who used to be with like Danny McCain and Dave Dirty Money. Okay. So we did that. Um, just to see how it would go, we had you know great reviews. We sold out. Um, nice. <clears throat> but while getting ready for the next show, life happened. I went through some things, and I was literally on my way out of Alabama, mm -hmm. and I was praying to God. And I'm like, Lord, what? Where do you want me to be? Like, where do you want me to go? I was like, I have a decision to make because I have a 17 year old and 11 year old. Really? Yeah. <laughs> She My son graduated this year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So at that time, I was like, I'm ready to leave. You know, basically, and I found out later through therapy that I was just like running from some problems right. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So shout literally, shout out to the therapy. Yeah. Man. Gotta, yeah. Shout out to the therapy. Therapy. Hello. Um, and I was like, Lord, I need, I need you to answer now. Cause I made plans with my refund. I was like, I'm gonna be out of here. Right. 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 Deuces. I don't care if I know nobody. Mm -hmm. Um. And I go on, um, I go on Instagram, and uh, I see Pastor, what's his name, the one dating Shawnee on you, Keon. Keon, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm scrolling through, and that little one minute snippet said I was going back home to Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, the snippet said somebody right now trying to decide they want to move back to Florida. He said if you're gonna move to Florida, you're gonna lose your kids. And I was like. It was like right behind what I just prayed, and God told me you have purpose here. Right. So I stayed. So in that, from that time, from 2017, I literally had to go through battles of what will people say, you know, worrying about what people gonna think and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, Lord, this is you gave me this vision. This mm -hmm. is way bigger than me. Right. Way bigger than my finances and everything. So. If you gave it to me, you gonna you gonna do what you gonna do, and you are gonna use me as a vessel. I'm here, and I literally had to take a hiatus, and I struggled with becoming a for like a nonprofit or staying a for profit. And during the for profit time, I couldn't get anything moving. I couldn't get any responses or anything. Mm -hmm. But the minute I listened to God and and put that application in for a nonprofit, when I tell you things started moving, mm -hmm. so now when I felt like things was gonna get, you know, popping and COVID hit. So I had to put a halt on the stuff that I was playing. And now, at that time, mm -hmm. I'm now doing it. Right. So mm -hmm. now we're, you know, things are kind of getting back to normal. Now we have events coming back up. Okay. So during that time, since 2017, I didn't do anything after that one show. I've been just focused on hearing God and following his, wherever he's guiding me to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm doing this the way that he wants me to do it because it's not about me. Gotcha. It's about, you know, giving back and during that time um, with therapy, he made me see myself and made me understand why I went through the things that I went through, Ma made sense of my childhood right. leading up. So now it's like, yeah, when we talk about children in underprivileged and underserved areas, it's, for me, mm -hmm. it's not just the black the young black kids because you have kids in the country who technically they have big houses and stuff but they still don't have access to some of the art programs that the kids that's in these urban areas you know they don't have those same programs facts, as well. facts. Mm -hmm. um and i went to like predominantly white schools yeah my mm -hmm. whole life yeah. and even i lack proper arts programming because mm -hmm. it's all traditional i wanted to do more i wasn't allowed to do more mm -hmm. And I still suffer. I was still going through, I went through a lot of depression. I'm like, I just want to do more. Never, they never gave the opportunity to do more. It was just, this is what it is. This is what we're going to stick to. So going through all of that, I was like, I'm going to do and provide for the kids that are in these schools too, because even they lack. All right. Yeah. Even a lot of like white ones too. A lot of people don't understand that because it's like, oh, well, they go to a white school. A lot of these kids literally be dang on their depressed because it's like their parents for whatever reason i don't know they can't get them to certain things they don't have the access mm -hmm. so if the only thing we're stuck with is learning about the baroque period throughout and you know the renaissance and all that stuff we're learning about the same thing over and over and over mm -hmm. and there's no access so it's like that's what 
that's my definition of underprivileged and underserved as well. It almost sounds like you're trying to develop a curriculum that the state will be taking on at some point in time to incorporate in the school systems. I receive that. <laughs> it, for real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's because I, I, I've been told that they was like, so who are you doing this for? Like your why? Yeah, my why. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm doing it for underprivileged, underserved. They was like, so in these areas? I was like, no. No, like... In these areas, they was like, well, try this area first. So when I tried, I couldn't get a response from mm -hmm. right. city council. I couldn't get a response from anybody. And it's like, well, I'm trying to do it in y'all communities, but y'all not really responding to me. Y'all not, no email, no text, no nothing. So I was like, well, I'm going to go back to my original, which mm -hmm. is really God's idea. He's mm -hmm. expand. Mm -hmm. So once I honestly started following him and following his plans, started getting responses, things started moving. It was just like, Whoosh, just like a straight go. So I was like, okay, I see you. I, I see you. <laughs> so this is what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it. And, you know, that's when uh, things start pointing back to that more so that that, that quote-unquote saying that was not really what you know, but it's about who you know. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, as much as I hate to say it, like, we're going to take our head off to God because we know we wouldn't be where we are yeah, if it wasn't true. for him. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that goes without being said. I mean, when you get around the church folks, you have to make sure that you say it because if you don't say it, they feel like you don't feel like that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying all that to simply say that at the end of the day, you got to start, we, we have to start putting ourselves in rooms and rubbing shoulders with the necessary people that can push the agenda. Yes. And as much as I hate politics, mm -hmm. It's part of life, and you got to learn how to play it. Yeah. True. Especially with what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you, if if you don't know how to play politics, it's like you may have a little bit of success, and once that success hit, it's like we stay in that place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because we don't know the next person that we need to know that can be like on the golf course on Sunday, drinking cognac. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I met this such and such person. They got this going on. I would love for you to meet them. Yeah. And now you're meeting somebody that you probably never would have met. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so. And, and again, and that's what this is about. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got our little bit of listeners. We got our little bit of subscribers right Damn. now. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't going to start creating content. You know, know what I'm right. saying? Like, yeah. it's, and I, I I hate that you're here today. You want to know how I tell you? You want to know how? Why? Because we just talked about um, a series that we're going to do in May and in June. Mm -hmm. Like, your story is passionate for what you're talking about and how you're telling. Like, you would have made the perfect mompreneur. Cause she is in May, <laughs> like seriously, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll definitely come back. Yeah, so, okay, I'll definitely come back. Yeah. So speaking, it's, go ahead. speaking of that, because you know, you said I know that you're a mom. Yeah, you know, me and you talk shop like off off camera and everything. So how do you balance everything with being a mompreneur? Well, that's our go to. Your your kids are involved in extracurricular activities as well. Because I know we talked about your daughter yeah. going, being in L. A. recently. So how yeah. do you balance everything, girl? Oh my gosh! So thank God for my mother. Right. Uh -huh. Because if right now it's just me and her and mm -hmm. my children, mm -hmm. it's us here. All my family is in Florida. If if it had not been for my mom, like that's my support system. Yeah. And sh mom, for real. Like if she, because if it was just me, I would I probably wouldn't even be sitting here talking to y'all. Sure. Right, and that's right. just real. Like that's like for real, I would not be here because I there have been times where I wanted to pull out my hair. My lashes, I, at one point I did because I was so stressed out. But I was just like, how do they do this? Yeah. Right. Like, you have to have a strong support system. Um, God just has been keeping my mom, um, let me not say healthy. She's healthy. God's been keeping us. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, that's the best way I could say. He's been really keeping us um, and keeping my family to get us through the hard times, to get us to this point now, and he's still continuing to do so. All right. So that's how I'm able to truly balance mm -hmm. um, and just making sure that whatever my children are doing is what they want to do, not right. what I want them to do. Right. All right. So it makes it better. Uh, it makes it easier for me because my son, he does football. My daughter is, you know, she's acting and dancing. Um, and she does, like, modeling on the side and stuff. But that's everything she wants to do. But I'm able with this, my handy dandy calendar, <laughs> I'm able to just really look at everything and be like, okay, this is what I can do. So really just by the grace of God, his strength, uh, keeping me focused, keeping my mom in good health, keeping me, myself, in good health, um, 
and just really positioning us to where we can we I can put my kids in different activities and stuff and I could make sure I'm able to do what I need to do. Um, you know, he's put people in my life, my, you know, wonderful assistant Royal uh, Cromwell. Um, he has the Royal Factotum, you know, he does modeling classes and stuff for mm -hmm. models and stuff. He's amazing. But uh, Lord blessed me with him since I think 20, 2017, he helped me, helped me with my show and I've like called him back ever since because he was just that great, like great of an assistant. So having like good people in your, in your life helps you balance to find. that. Very. It is. We just talked about that this morning, didn't we, Jay? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Two nods. Yeah, we just talked about this morning. I have really I'm like having a team. trying to finesse him right now. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have trying people to that will stand in agreement with you with, with your vision. Yeah. You know, and what you're trying to do. That, that Your team makes such a big difference. Yeah, and I, you know? don't shade. Like, I'm not, uh, I don't want people to think my other team members, I want them to think that I'm not appreciate, appreciative of them because I am. Mm -hmm. um, however, Royal has really, like, been with me every step Through of the, the way. And I, yeah. Yeah, and I appreciate the people that have come and that have gone. Um, because at some point, like, they still help me, so I'm not going to ever take that away from them. Yeah. But, yeah, that's how, I'm able, that's how I'm able to balance stuff and just really, honestly, n seeking God in everything that I do mm -hmm. right, to make sure that what I'm doing is exactly in his wheel. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? So, so I mean, we can... So, so with everything that you're saying, okay, we're going... I'm going I'm to I'm do this, and it's probably going to be frowned upon because I really be on this platform oh. talking crazy. Oh, I gosh. be cussing, oh, carrying oh, on. Goodness. I do, hookah, too. I ain't going to lie. I'm working on it every single day. Smoking hookah on camera, drinking <laughs> on camera, talking about poom poom and everything else. Oh, That's, poom you know, poom. but, yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> because when I said it mm -hmm. on camera and I played it back, the next day I told the Kim, I said, I can't say that no more, Kim. She was yeah. like, what you mean? I was like, it just sounds awful coming out of my mouth mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like i just we could talk about it how we want to talk about it but i can't do it the reason i'm saying that is because this is it's, i want to share this with you real quick so i often allow or let people in and let them know that at one point in time i was in ministry you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying and i seen you fumbling trying to find the exact words that you wanted to kind of sort of mm -hmm. you know put the perspective of the relationship and the bond that has been formed between mother and daughter mm -hmm. that is actually allowing for you to be able to get something through if yeah. that makes sense you it see does. what i'm saying yeah so the, the 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 first book that i read when i was in my master's program for public administration with the concentration in nonprofit management mm -hmm. the first book i read they reference the bible in the first chapter of the book you know what they talked about what? they talked about the 12 disciples mm. they talked about how christ delegated you know what I'm saying? There was delegation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of time when that delegation comes, you see people that are serve and that are help because they understand the vision. They understand the call. Yeah. Most of all, they understand the calling. Mm -hmm. Just because you have a calling don't mean that you're in a pulpit. Just because you have a calling don't mean that you're wearing a hat because you're a first lady. Just because you're a calling don't mean that you're singing the, singing the solo in the choir stands. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can have a calling and be sitting in the back just because you want to be in the midst. Mm -hmm. It's a difference when you're in the midst of people. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. the book says, like, when two or more gather, mm -hmm. I'll be there with you. Yeah. So if you're telling me the type of connection that you and your mom got, that's why your stuff is getting through. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. when, you're pray, when you actually pray, your, your prayers are getting hurt. Yeah. Like, like, for real. Like, there's, a, there, there's another story, and I, I, I don't want to reference to it because I don't really know it in depth. Mm -hmm. But there are definitely books about just the women in the Bible. If you just look at them, man, like my pastor preached a message one, one Mother's Day. He says, there's never been a woman in the Bible that called on God for anything and they didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think about that. I am. Google yeah. the characters, the, 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 the people that are women-wise in the Bible, read their story, mm -hmm. and whatever they requested of God, they never not got it. Mm. They always got it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if, if you aligning yourself that type of way to say that this is what I'm going to get and I'm getting it because I'm speaking into existence, mm -hmm. I'm seeing it because God has opened my eyes for me to see it. See, a lot of people say they see stuff, but they're not looking through the right eye to be able to see it. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that makes so that's why, you know what I'm saying, even when I be going through in this studio, like I think that the, the nowadays angel that God has put in my life, and it's not the, to talk pull on her toe to nothing has, has been Kim. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We literally talk about everything. It don't matter what's going on. 
uh, you know what I'm saying? Friendship, relationship, business, it don't matter. We, we, we talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And for a long period of time, when I started this journey by myself, I didn't have an outlet, you know what I'm saying? Because I started to rebel against different people for, for different reasons mm -hmm. because I thought that they should have been there. Ooh. But during those seasons, yeah, gotta show you who's supposed to be where and what they're supposed to do. That's right. If yeah. it's if it's something that you're supposed to have, he'll sustain you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, up. don't you bit. don't you start you mashing that button, man. Warning. Do not start mashing that button, man. You gotta give me a warning before you say I'm over here preaching. Cause I'm like shouting loud enough. I'm all, you know, I'm focused and stuff, and then you gonna come with a little applause and, and in the ear. I really didn't want to make it come off as if it's preaching. You know what I'm saying? Nah, but I nah, had it it I had matter. somebody the other day to tell me like uh, their mom was dealing with a preacher, mm -hmm. and she was like, I really don't like the Negro because. He don't practice what he preach. And I was like, well, let me tell you something. Do you know what his responsibility is? She was like, what you talking about? His responsibility, no matter his lifestyle, no matter what he do, is to preach the unadulterated truth. So just because he's not doing it or living it don't mean that he can't get up in the pulpit and tell the sheep what is truth. I'm not condoning or saying what he's doing is right. Mm -hmm. But his responsibility, his spiritual responsibility is to tell the people the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's at the end of the day when I'm, I'm put in a, in, in a midst of people that have a spiritual foundation and they can receive something spiritually, mm -hmm. I don't mind giving it to them. Yeah. Because I am who I am. I, I know now, being 37 years old, that I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to live how I want to live. I don't live a live because of lifestyles. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to you, the only thing I want to say after that long spill, keep doing what it is that you want to do. Because it's, it's already been it's already been signed off on. Like, yeah. It's just about connecting the dots right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I appreciate look forward to the next storm. Because you know on the other side of the storm is sunshine. Like you know what's coming. Like you, you, you know something is going to happen for you. So you're expecting the enemies. You're expecting the naysayers. You're expecting the no's. You're expecting for the doors to be shut. But my thing is, when somebody shuts one door, I'm going to find a way to go around it. I'm going to find me a now. window, a crack, or something like that. I don't care yes. if I got to slide a piece of paper under the door. Somebody's going to hear what I got to say. That's yes. right. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. all I want to do is give it to you and say, just keep doing <laughs> what you're doing. And I receive that. That's what's up, I man. Yes. Because even like up. she and I used to, just to give y'all a little backstory and context, V and I used to work together. Okay. Where? Where? I'm not. We're I'm not going to disclose that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to disclose that. What? We're not. Mm -hmm. we yeah, we're not going to. We're not going to disclose that. We don't speak no, like seriously, things. we're really not. But um. <laughs> man, I need my cup, man. Golly. Here you go. You have some water. <laughs> it's holy water. But, <laughs> <laughs> so we needed at that but place. But she and I used to work together, and some of the stuff, y'all, Jesus, oh Shabbata, some of the stuff <laughs> <laughs> that. that Girl, because you know, some of yeah. the stuff that she and I just experienced and saw there just presently at the same time, we were like, what in the world? So we really like clung together just to just get through the day. Like I would come literally, like, where is V? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just where is V? And just as she and I got to know each other and she's just telling me all these things that she's been through and just everything that she had just going on. I like her. Like I was like, oh, I love her. Just because she was just always just so in encouraging and just and spot girl. Like you would give me some oh, some gems goodness. at work. Like and I'd be like, Lord help me, cause I, I want to pull my edges out. They they're already not that long, but anyway, <laughs> I, you know, so I'm weak. And it just kind of just circled back around to like some things that you shared to me about like pose design. I know you also told me that you are a designer. Oh yeah, as I forgot well. to mention. I'm sorry. And oh, I was getting. Out. I get lost in. <laughs> I get lost when I be talking about pose design. And and I had no idea until I saw you post recently about Camille Anthony. So for the people who don't know. Girl, Spill the tea, girl. What is Camille <laughs> Anthony? Who is she? And what's coming with that? Because I know you're telling me that you um, have a model call. So what is Camille Anthony? So, yeah. So Camille Anthony is my baby. It's my swimwear line. Okay. Um, I specialize in swimwear. Um, although I will... Uh, <laughs> I will design like ready to wear clothing. I love what the challenge of what I can do with a little piece of fabric. Gotcha. So yeah, Camille Anthony, that's after that's actually named after my children. Um, I put their middle names together. So Jada Camille Yay. and Jamar Anthony. I wanted to make it that's personal. That's dope. Mm -hmm. So that's dope. Camille Anthony. That's what I come from. But like the Camille Anthony moment is someone who I took 
you know, when people say, oh, that's, somebody's a chameleon, it usually has a, a, a negative tone behind it. True. Mm-hmm. But I based it kind of like off of how I like to dress. Like, I'm, I'm going to always be me, but I like to explore different, mm-hmm. you know, styles. Yes. So whatever I wear, whether one day I want to be, you know, bohemian, whether I want to be, you know, biker chick or conservative, I'm mm-hmm. still me. Like, right. the clothes don't make me. I make the clothes. Make the clothes. Right, right. So it's really the, per- the woman um, who just wants to be herself and not be put in the box and want to try different styles yeah. and still feel like she can do this without sacrificing who she is. Who she is. Yes. So that's gotcha. the Camille Anthony woman, yeah. Yes. But, that's yeah. what's up, So when, when is this launching? When is this coming? Oh, my gosh. So I may have to push that back. That's okay. I may have to push it back just because when I got my samples, mm-hmm. all that meeting today, uh, we were, man, me and Crystal, we were hurt. Mm. Oh, but yeah, um, I'm thinking about. I still want to do probably like a, a soft, just a viewing mm-hmm. in May. Yeah, okay. I'm still considering May 14th for it. Um, but yes, I am looking for models, yes. fit models. Um, you know, no experience necessary. Okay, mm, doesn't matter what size you are, because I design for the curvy girls. So, 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 so. <laughs> You be I de- quiet. I, 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 I decide for the tall ones, too. Thank Listen, you. so yes. I got... I, got <laughs> I do men's as well. Y'all gonna model for me? Uh, uh, I ain't got it in me. I'm sorry. Come on. I'm the guy on the other end of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jay said, I have my lane, and I'm, I'm <laughs> stick uh, Rihanna done opened that up for, for y'all, for Listen, y'all fellas. With, with Savage X. You don't want to be part of Savage X. I do whatever Rihanna want me to do. I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't have to come with the bar. Get out. I was in, I was in, a, I, was in I, I love what you just said about no matter what you put on, you define it. Yes. Um, because number one, I was in a modeling troupe when I was at Troy. Okay. And uh, that's when I learned about fashion and really like got in depth on the self-care. Mm-hmm. Like those women made me feel like it was essentially okay as a man to go in a place and get your feet and your hands done. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, my dad does good. that. The women, were, they taught me what blotting was. They taught me about mm-hmm. the proper draws that are supposed to be worn <laughs> mm-hmm. for women. Like yeah. Because when I would go places with these girls, they literally would sit around and talk about everybody that walked past. You know what I'm saying? Because they were obsessed with mm-hmm. clothes and fashion, how you presented yourself. And one of the presidents, well, at, well she was one of the founders. I'm going to say the president. The motto for them was um, fashion is an unspoken language. So mm-hmm. when you speak, speak well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you said that, it just it just made me think of that. So I heard you say something about sample pieces. Yes. So I want to go back there. And I heard you say that you design and do for everybody. So are you designing and sending it off? Or you got, are you designing, uh, then sewing it, and then sending it off so that they can mass produce it? Like, what's your process with that? So I'm, I actually self-taught myself. I taught myself how to sew. Really? Okay. Yeah. See, people like you and my mama just make me like. Oh. Yeah, I taught myself how to sew. I was yes. forced to though. Okay. Really? I was. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know how. I really cannot remember how. This person found out that I designed swimwear. Uh-huh. But way back when, mm-hmm. when UAB was doing their spring fashion show, yeah. someone reached out to me and said, "Hey, we have a designer drop out. Would you mind doing it? Mind you, it was two weeks before the show." I said, yeah. I had no sewing machine, no experience. I had not one pattern. I didn't have thread. So I took my behind to Walmart and got me a brother sewing machine for $50 Hello. and looked at the pattern. I didn't even read. I just looked at the pictures. Kind of like when you assemble something, right. you just look at the pictures. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I did and created a 12-piece collection in two weeks. Wow. Presented on the runway and even went and had uh, to S Pet World and rented me two snakes. Girl. Live snakes. So when me, the final, the uh, finale walk mm-hmm. with my final model, she had like, I still remember she had a, it was a deep V neck, halter style, shiny uh, black snake print. Mm-hmm. I threw some chains on there because I was like, this is going to be rock and roll, rock and roll style. <laughs> and I gave, I said, which snake you want? You want this snake or this snake? And she was like, I get this snake. So we got the snakes, put on us, and we walked out like, hey, this is us. And we walked back. Yeah, I love it. And All that's right. how I got started in it. So, 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 so <laughs> that was an initial question though, but that's yeah, because I, I still need the answer because I got, I got, I got, I got another question I want to ask behind that. So, are you going to address it? Yeah. So, um, if if I sew, I sew if I have to like my samples, but I have manufactured, I have a manufacturer in uh, 
Texas, okay. in um, Austin, who does my samples. I have a lady who I just met with in Iowa who's doing my patterns. Mm -hmm. And the sample that I received was from a Chinese manufacturer, a China manufacturer. So basically, you dream it up, draw it up, send yeah. it here, then it goes to here, then it goes there. When by the time it comes back to you, it's uh, complete. Some sort. It's supposed to be, yes. We go through nice. the revisions and everything, but yeah, that's the, that's the whole goal. Um, it's right. a lot when you do it by yourself, but having that team right. is important. Your wheels so, are so yeah, so the juice is flowing. <laughs> I see it. I'm ready to go. Put the camera on me, baby. Oh my I'm ready God. to go. Oh Y'all see me? I'm ready to go. All right, so Safari is my brand. Yes. All right. I want to literally team up with you. Okay. I want you to tell me what I need to do, and I want a swimsuit line. I want 12 different swimsuits mm -hmm. so I can put them on 12 different models and put it on the calendar and sell the calendar. And it'll be my brand, but mm -hmm. inside of the tag, it'll say designed by none other than me. What's up? <laughs> so first, we need to schedule a meeting outside of the podcast so we can actually like talk and stuff. Drop you know what? I, can, I, can, for? <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to be like Danny Austin. Be like, I'm going to let my sister get with you and then we'll go from there. <laughs> I'm really trying to get there. Like, that would have been a perfect nanny that. moment. I that would have been a perfect nanny moment. I can't afford you, cuz. Leave me alone. I can't afford that. you right now. I can't afford you. I, I, I'm going to pay you when I get some chips. Listen, I ain't got I'm, no chips. Listen, I'm broke. I'm working, I'm working for free. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> for free. It's all good. Um, who you design it for, though? Um, Is it just me? Is, well, you said calendar, so really. Yeah, so it. yeah, it ain't going to be no guys. Uh, I'm the, the firehouse guys can stay at the firehouse. I'm leaving. I, 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 you know, <laughs> I'll cater to that whenever I get ready. But for, for me right now, like, the majority of people that I think the first, like, Kirby model I'm going to work with is going to be next month. Okay. Right? And she went on a dramatic, like, weight loss thing. Mm -hmm. And she's embracing her journey and stuff. Like, she spent top chip with me. I ain't even going to lie. The women spent $1,500 with me. Like, she want to do, like, four or five different looks. I think they're going, wow. up, going up in the mountains somewhere. She want to do a Boudreaux look. Mm -hmm. You know, she want to do all these different looks, too, because she compl she's complimenting herself. Like, mm -hmm. she said, like, pat myself on the back. I, I, I arrived where I wanted to be. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I, when we was on Clubhouse two years ago when they first started jumping, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the photographers that I talked to, we understood that the market was changing in terms of models. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is now a demand for curvy models. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and I knew it was real when I seen the H&M commercial with the curvy, all curvy models in it. Mm -hmm. They had the curvy model jumping off the cliff and all the other stuff come, walking up out the water. And every time I seen, I was like, okay, sis, embrace who you is. And I'm like, like I'm on. So, so if you ask me right now who, what I would be catering to, mm -hmm. because I would want to push the brand and get it out there, mm -hmm. I would want to be able to network with the people that are already in my network. So I'm not, because whether you curvy or not curvy, mm -hmm. all models treat photographers the same. Mm. If you don't already, it, well, if you don't already have an established name per yeah. se, you know what I'm saying? Like me, for instance. If I go and find a curvy model that I want to work with and I see why I want to work with her and I DM her to ask her to work with her, that DM is probably either going to go all the way left mm -hmm. or I might it might be a 2 or 3% chance that she receive it and be like, okay, what you got going on? Yeah. So it don't matter what you look like in the modeling world, you know what I'm saying? Because... Mm -hmm. Everybody get money, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter if you small, slim, thick, curvy, whatever you call yourself, it don't matter, you know what I'm saying? Because it's curvy models right now that have hundreds and thousands and millions of followers on different social media and they're they doing their thing. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So true. so yeah. it ain't like the it ain't like you DMing, you know what I'm saying, uh Britney Renner or something like that, mm -hmm. um, and, and hoping to get a response. You got some curvy girls that's the exact same version of what Britney Renner is. She's just a curvy model, and she's going to treat your DM the same way that Britney Renner would. Yeah. So it really don't matter, like, the, the physique. I'm only saying what I'm saying from my perspective because I know what my I know what's in my phone. Right. I know who I can hit up real quick and be like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I want to incorporate you in it. What's up? You trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? And right now, my catalog doesn't consist of curvy models. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Is that... Look at her. There she goes. Yeah. I mean, I gotta, it's about inclusivity, sir. I'm it is. Saying. And Rihanna clearly told the world, saying. you got to be like. It's Rihanna, though. 
I it know, don't but matter. I'm, it's still, like she really put that, like she used her platform to really show the world that you have to be like size, like size exclusivity mm-hmm. is important. You can't really move forward mm-hmm. and still exclude um, average, yes. average huh? woman, cur- yes. a curvy woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically why Victoria's Secret. I'm probably speaking on that's why they, they fashion show just kind of went like blah. Mm-hmm. For real? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, exactly I, I don't keep up with stuff like that. Like like when I met with my first vendor, when I when I when I got my brand, when see I, the, the the lady who does my designing of like all my artwork and my wordage is mm-hmm. in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Swarm Mode Creative, Latoya okay. Mathis. Hey, um, hey, Latoya. And she she does all my stuff. Yeah. And uh we finally got the wordage done. And uh for my uh, sip and shoot event a couple Sundays ago, mm-hmm. I, w- I wore the brand for the first time. So when it comes to, and, I, and I'm trying to come back and make sure that I do damage control because I don't want for the brand to get the wrong name. Like I don't want to cater to a certain um, demographic because that's not, that's not what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm doing putting a project together, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I know what I want the project to look like. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm sitting down and having that business meeting with you and you're asking me, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Of course, I don't want for somebody to get on the website and not see something that they want to get because it's not in size. Right. Like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Mm-hmm. If, if that made sense, then you wouldn't see no 2X and 3X and 4X t-shirts back here that we give our guests. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So it's, it's not about that to me. It's about, like, I'm at a point in my career well, I, I like for certain stuff to just be smooth because everything else is already hard enough. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now my time is valuable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not in here working, I'm somewhere else working. I'm not somewhere else working. I'm probably somewhere else working. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now my time is money. So I don't necessarily have the time per se that when I'm doing something that I know actually costs money, mm-hmm. that means the people that I'm involved in, in it, they're an investment as well. So whatever I'm about to invest in them when it comes to my time, my efforts, my art, my eye, whatever the case may be, I need for them to be able to reciprocate that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I actually target certain people that I work with. I work with them for a particular reason. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I'm past the stage of just jumping in the next pretty girl DM and be like, I want to do something with you. Like the last collab that me and her just did, the reason that I jumped into her DM to work with her is number one because she had a look that I want, but number two, she's extremely active on social media. Yeah. On all platforms. Like she's always posting, doing, 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 doing. Hey, yeah, come on in. Let's do something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Kim did the makeup, collab. I did the shoot, collab. She gonna go crazy with the images and do what she wanna do with them once we're done. And then when we looked at it, it was a masterpiece. You know what I'm saying? That's so I'm getting yeah. what I want out of it, if that makes sense. You yeah, know what it's I'm beneficial saying? to both parties. Yeah, it got it got to be beneficial. Like I'm yeah. not if you know curvy models that that got a platform, bro, that I'm all about it. I do. Like like That's like just just trying to Me grab too, somebody yeah. and and recreate them. I'm and like I, while, while you're talking, I'm already like I know he gonna like this person. I know he gonna like this person. I know he gonna like this person. Like I'm already like in in my database. Cause you know like when and I, and I'm gonna stop talking. And I'm gonna let Kim take over. Cause you know like when you're doing certain stuff, right? Like if if I have a, a curvy model that comes in, she's paid for a shoot. Mm-hmm. At that at that point in time, she's paid me for a service. Whenever I'm shooting any woman in the world, I don't give a damn what you look like. You're the most beautiful person in the world. Mm-hmm. I'm going to flirt with you. I'm going to get the facial reactions I want out of you. I'm going to get the motions out of you. I, I want to see your body relax because a handsome black man is right in front of you talking the talk that you probably ain't heard in a couple of months. And it's yeah. just making you feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. Like that's the dynamic that in, in the atmosphere that I try to create when I'm shooting. Yeah. Because that's what they paid me to do. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Now, when I'm working on a project that's something that I done put my money, my time, and my efforts into, mm-hmm. and you and you coming in to do a collab and work with me, I ain't got time to do all that with you because you doing a job. Like, I need you to come in and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that's going. That's what I'm talking about yeah. in terms of who I work with, with, with stuff like that. But yeah. I'm definitely interested. If that's something that you're, we gonna talk. That you're, that you're willing to do or you're interested in do, we yeah, can sit down. Yeah, my kids is already. We can get in the fine print. You know how, we can get in the fine print and get together. Y'all know my mind. Jay know. And how you know she ain't heard it though, sir? I heard what? I don't know. I heard what? Mm-hmm. You can tell by a woman respond to you when you can tell she heard it. 
her in a while, long time, short time. Didn't hear from the person she wanted to hear from. Cause I'm sex at the end of the day. I might be old, but I still look good. You, uh, bro, if you don't get out, I ain't got old. no pop belly. You can't be saying mm-hmm. old because you gonna really start feeling old. Hello, Girl, that's old. what Bishop Jake stop said. Stop saying it. Man, y'all better start listening to Bishop Jake. Yeah, I said it. No, nope. I'm just playing. No, nope. I'm just playing. Jake's is the Michael Jordan of preaching. <laughs> that's my man. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. I'm just playing. Nah, but hey, I, 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 I have to correct myself. Don't be saying you old because you, you gonna really Thank start you. feeling it. For exactly. Real. Man, I did. Power, sir. For real. Well, I'll stop that real quick. We said what we said. Your words have power. Mm-hmm. You're not old. You're so foundation, clothing line. Yes. What's in between? What are we? What are? What are we missing? Like if if there was a million people listening right now, what would you want the, that those million people to know? Like just about me personally. Yeah. Like if you if you're selling because you're a brand, you're a walking brand now. Mm-hmm. Everything that you do that your name is attached yeah. to, like your representation of it. You know what I'm saying? So again, if there was a million people listening right now and and you know, with everything that we talked about this evening, like what has not been said that you would want for the people to know? Oh God, I haven't even really That's what it's, it's supposed about to be that. like that. Yeah. It's supposed I to be like that. Um, I mean, honestly, just know that I I'm here to leave a legacy. I'm here to mm-hmm. keep this going. Let your heart um, talk. Because it's, it's bigger than me. Like <laughs> this ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm All just right. the vessel. So it's like, okay, what's next? So I'm I'm working on. I have some long term goals. Right. Um. I'm gonna just put this out here because I, I I try not to say what I'm working on, but I feel like yeah. I need to plant this seed for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But one of my goals is to take the, um, it really hurt, hurts my heart when I go into um, the black community and see all of those uh, elementary schools shut down. Mm. Um, because I used to work for the post office and a lot of their schools is in neighborhoods, but they're up and running and I hate Going into our neighborhoods and the children, when they go outside, they don't have a place to go. Right. So that's a long term thing. Like I want a school. Like I want to do what LeBron and them did. That's dope, I want bro. A, I want a school. You don't hear a lot of people say that nor do it. Like, no. like LeBron really did something when he did that. Like, how many people outside of that that are the black millionaire guy who opened up the school for all all um all males in Chicago. Yes. They used to do that lottery system to get yeah. into the school system. Like I saw to him, I didn't know anybody that was opening up no schools mm-hmm. that was that was, you know, us yeah. <clears throat> or whatever the case may be. So I think if you bro, again, you gotta start playing the politics. I am, you know what I am playing the politics. I am I'm working on it. I am, but I really is is I don't want the traditional school. Yes. Like I love the idea behind the creative Montessori schools mm-hmm. and how the the learning like the structure of it is very non traditional. Yeah. Um, but I want to also focus on the creative arts as well. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. A lot of the Montessori schools they don't have a big extracurricular. Um, they don't have a lot of those programs. So the fashion, art, music. They have those, but it's just the way they're doing it. Yeah. So I want to bring in a different kind of art programming. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah. So when you so what's your niche? When you say creative art, is just you know is sewing and designing is that your niche or do Mm-mm. you guys focus other stuff? on those four: fashion, art, music, and education. So with education, it's, it's whatever it is: financial literacy, um, college, uh, college recruiting, like any anything educational. Gotcha. But just fashion, whether it's production. Uh, Marketing, all of that stuff for fashion, music, production, engineering. Um, what did I leave out? Art, theater, um, whatever the school, whatever is being offered in the schools, we don't want to do that. Gotcha. That's that's really that's our specialty. Like I don't want to hold a workshop for them to come in and do painting because they have that already. We got a team. I don't. With I don't. Too. I don't want them. I feel like I don't feel like they should have to wait until they graduate high school to do to, like to do certain things. Right. And right. not everybody is college material. No. Right. So right. I would like to set them up now. Right. In high right. school. Right. Yeah. So we really our focus is high school students and college students. Okay. To help get them there. So it's like if you if you want to go to college, we'll definitely help you like with a scholarship. If you don't want to go to college, we'll help you in a ways. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's one of the things I struggled with. Like, I did not want to, you know, go to college at all. I really didn't, but I went. Yeah. Because, you know, and this is just being honest, I didn't want to sit there and pay student loans mm. without yeah. the degree. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I went back anyways. Right. Um, I went back for myself, my children. Right. Um, and, of course, I didn't want to sit there and pay student loans for nothing and not have a degree. Right. But overall, like, I, I'm only providing what I wish I had. Right. Yeah. That's really that's really the and the that's whole. and that's one of the things that Kim came out of the gate. You know, what I'm saying when we started just now talking about things that we wanted to try to make sure that the studio offers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, Kim came straight out the book. Like, hey, so what are we gonna do for the kids? Yeah, like we're gonna do some camps, so a couple of day camps or something like that, so we can bring them in and show them this and show them that. Because at the end of the day, we do live in a day and time where you don't have to go to college, man, to be the next millionaire or billionaire. Like, yeah. that means you, you don't have to do that. Uh, and and I, I'll be honest, bro. I think I just went to college just to say that I got that piece of paper. Mm-hmm. I was just telling them about, you know what I'm saying, um, Jay asked me, like, like, what I do, and I told him. I was like, but my job don't pay me for that. Mm-hmm. Like, I have an extensive background in communication and electronics with a degree in computer science. Six classes because I dropped out to have a master's in public administration. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's like, if anybody look at that, my, 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 my history professor told me this. He says, I'm in here and I'm teaching. I love it. But I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> the only thing a degree does for you is show an employee that you have the ability to learn. Yeah. Mm. That's all it does. And that's not the first time I've heard that. Yeah, you know I mean? Yeah. He said, that's all it does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it all rolls back to, you know, who you know. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I work with people right now that don't have nowhere near the level of intelligence that I have. And they work right beside me. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. because of who they know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely commend you on everything that you've accomplished thus far. Again, Thank you. you don't keep pushing. Uh you are definitely uh a gem, Shawty. Like I really I really feel like you you're a person we need to keep around and make sure that, you know, we continue to make sure that you're okay and we can support you in any kind of way we yeah. can. And so uh, do you. you have any events coming up that you actually want to pub? Because I know you told me you put everything on hold because of COVID. So y'all are revamping and getting everything together. Though. Yeah, actually, we have a uh, we have a dance workshop. Yes, we were dance talking about workshop. that. We was. We have a what kind of dance? So listen, um, grown I folks or cheer? It's no, for it's for the kids. Ah, uh, okay. It's for the kids. like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all have y'all have y'all stuff. Um, no, it's oh definitely. My God. I cannot be him. <laughs> no, this dance workshop is just for the kids, ages okay. twelve through seventeen. Yeah. Okay. So middle school and high school um, students. So this workshop will be hosted by uh, award-winning choreographer Anthony Burrell. He is. Uh, toured with Beyonce. He was one of the creative directors with her Super Bowl performance when she was doing it by herself. He's done work with Rihanna, Riri, uh, Riri Prince, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, Jay Z, J Lo, and, and honest Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, um, Mary J. <laughs> Miss, uh, no, not Missy Elliott. He probably did. I don't know, but just a lot of he. His resume is extensive. So, what is the class going to consist of? Like his specialty is jazz and contemporary uh, modern. He actually so has, doing like ballet stuff. No, it's jazz and jazz contemporary. Is completely different. It's completely different. Not the same. Yeah. Techniques may be the same, but not the same. Not the same. So they're doing the same like little dances that we see on all the videos just to jazz music? No. No. Jazz is... is School me. School me. It's more... It's a it's a style. Yeah. It's a dancing style. It's the techniques and how you move your body. Mm-hmm. Um, your form. Your form. Like, yeah, all of that stuff. So mm. that's what he's going to be teaching. Who's jazz. y'all cinematographer for the event? Um, Kirk. Kirk who? Jordan. Kirk Jordan. Who is that? Jay no. He five? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all that matters. He five. Because <laughs> I don't be mind calling no nigga out of their trash. Oh my oh gosh. Well, please, please let me just know. Saying. I'm just saying. I'm for let real, me bro. Know. Like, I, 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 hey, I hey listen, know. I done struggled to get where I'm at. So I stand behind. Hey, what, hey, hey, what that boy Denzel said? I stand behind my product. I stand behind my product. Well, right now we're standing behind hers. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get a job. Leave me alone. <laughs> Right now, I'm, I'm trying to get in. I'm trying to get in the house to support her product. Jay, you see something wrong with that? Kim over here throwing shots. I didn't throw no shots. That shit fired off a bazooka over there. Like, yeah. 
that mean? I'm, I'm just oh, circling. So jazz is a style. It's a new technique. Yes. You got this dope guy that's coming in to do it yeah. and tell the people when it's taking place and how they can register if they want to. Yeah, so it's taking place at the Dance Foundation Saturday, April 16th at 8 a.m. until okay. 12 noon. Um, and then go to our website, Pose Bazaar, P-O-Z-E, as in zoo, B-A-Z-A-A-R dot org. Sounds good yes. to me. There's a lot more workshops we have coming up, but y'all go on the website, sign up so y'all can know what we're doing. And how can the people find you and look you up on social media, girl? Oh, yeah. yeah. The V Monet. The. Well, that's my website. I haven't gotten up yet, but yeah. Uh, v Monet, um, V E E M O N E T on Facebook and on Instagram, the underscore V Monet. The. Gotcha. V Monet. V. The heavy on the the that's what's up, man. So I like to do this right before we end. Um, I'm gonna ask you one more time, just to kind of sort of plug everything that you just did one more time. Jay, please make sure her camera is on her when she do it. Which one I'm looking at? This one. This, this one. is your camera right there. Hey. So I want you to plug yourself one more time. Tell the good people where they can find you at. Uh, tell them your name, uh, and then um, we gonna get ready to close it out, man. Hey y'all. <laughs> Find me on Instagram and Facebook at B Monet, B E E M O N E T. And on Instagram again, the V Monet. Make sure you put that underscore in between the the and the V. There you go. You got it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, V Monet, man. Man, that was of that many, was... many, many platforms. Thank you. Yes. Um, I she. Was dope. You Listen. did. You did. Listen. You did. I appreciate it. That's my first podcast. For real? I was nervous. <laughs> Oh, you Girl, did awesome. Nervous, nervous. You did, you did good, man. Damn. So i like to thank you for coming in thank and so uh, kicking it. Thank you for having me. Kim, the MUA, thanks so much for extending an invitation to our guest on the night and bringing in a dope person. Uh, y'all, make sure y'all go and follow her. Make sure you support her. Uh, if you're in the immediate area and you heard this podcast and you heard something that can be beneficial to her cause and her mission and her vision on what she's doing, man, shoot her an email, man. Jump in her DM, you know, uh, I'm all about people that can vibe on the same thing. Don't bring the woman no friction where you're trying to come in and take over what she's doing and change and alter what she's doing. But if you can understand what she's trying to do and enhance that and empower it, definitely reach out to her, man. So without, yes. you know, <laughs> as we always do, man, I'm your boy, Chester, man. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, if you downloaded uh, the, the podcast, man, thanks so much, man. Tell somebody about it. Tell them about the content that we're doing, man. We are trying to get more creative and bring you more content. And we got some more stuff going. I haven't told Kim this, and this is going to be the first time that she is hearing it. We are adding, I'm not going to call it a segment, but we're adding a piece to our What's New and on our What's New, we got a section in there called Spill the Tea. So the website will be up and running tonight. You can go to www.whatyoumeanpodcast.com. Go to the Contact Us block. Go down to the bottom, click on Spill the Tea. And if you got a confession or you got a, a, a funny story that you want to tell, you can tell that story right there. Me and Kim will get it. We'll review it and take it under consideration if you want to bring it onto the show and talk about it with whomever our guest is on what's new. Just to add some juices and add another conversation piece to the show, man. So like I said, we've got some new stuff coming. We're trying to get it juiced up. But in the meantime, between time, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave us a comment on your boy, Cheston. I'm your girl, Kim. And until next time, y'all know what it is. Peace.